So we've done plenty of videos on the channel so far about how to use a fountain pen and how to sketch with a fountain pen. Um, and you can see an example of that just up here. Uh, we have lots to look at today. We've got lots and lots and lots of fountain pens. We're going to talk about um, the different types of inks and cartridges you can use. We're going to talk about different nibs. And we're going to talk about the construction of the fountain pen as well. So as you can see from this little lot here, I do have quite a few um, fountain pens and I do enjoy sketching with them. And I've learned quite a bit in, over the last few years about some of these different pens and their different characteristics. So let's, um, let's start off with the basics, shall we? So here's a question. Why use a fountain pen in the first place? Well, fountain pens are going to give you an irregular line. It doesn't really matter how careful you are with them. You do get line variation in a way that you perhaps wouldn't with a fiber tip pen such as a fine liner. One of the other things I really like about fountain pens is that they feel like an old fashioned technology. They feel like uh, there's a warmth to them that you really don't get with some of the more modern fine liners and markers and things like that. It's very tactile compared to some other more modern ways of mark making. Um, finally, I would say there's something a bit more environmental or sustainable uh, about servicing your own pen and keeping it going and the idea of, you know, I can't imagine my kids wanting to keep one of my worn out um, fine liners or something like that, but I mean, if these get, if these some of these fountain pens, I you know I have been using for years now, and they could be with me for the rest of my days, and I think there's something a bit more precious about that as an artifact, which I know sounds terribly romantic, but you know, I think a lot of creativity and the free expression about art and things is perhaps encapsulating a little bit of that emotion. Maybe not. I don't know. It depends on what you're doing with your art, but maybe I'm just a romantic. Anyway. I personally love fountain pens. It's it's the the um, there's something in the sort of Venn diagram of fountain pens and paper uh, that there's a very happy place in the middle for me there that I just do not get with digital art. And I understand a lot of people love that. It's not for me. So that being said, I think we all agree that fountain pens are great. So let's have a look at what a fountain pen actually is in its component parts. Right. So. What have we got here? This is a fountain pen. So it's pretty primarily made up of three bits. Now we have a, um, what's this? This is the cap. This is the stem um, or barrel. Now that's the basics of that little bit. There's a bit at the end there, which is referred to as the finial. But anyway, once you take the cap off, inside what you tend to have is something that looks a little bit like this. So um, there's your barrel again. And then this part here is the grip. This part here is called the section. Exciting. Now this bit here is very much the business end of all these pens. Uh, and you'll never guess what that's called. That's right, it's called the nib. So that's how, that's exactly what a, uh, a fountain pen is generally made up of. There is variations of course, because there's lots of different types of pens. But that's basically primarily what it looks like. So the most common nib on fountain pens tends to be the round nib, as seen here on my Opus 88. Now, it basically means that writing is nice and smooth, and it gives you a, an even line in pretty much every direction you use it. So what well, that means that if you go in this direction, or this direction, or even in a circle there, you get a nice even line. You're obviously going to get some slight imperfections, like when you stop, you get a blob. And if you do that, you can see you're going to get line imperfections there. But that's kind of why you're using a fountain pen anyway. So this is a medium nib. So it's good enough for doing sort of blocking in stuff. But it's also fine enough for most 
work. Now I do find with this nib, if you use it backwards, you get a slightly, slightly thinner line as if you use it forwards. But it's not, it's not massive. Now you can use it lightly, or you can use it heavy. And as you push down, it will spread its tines a little bit and give you a thicker line. Okay, so that's a round nib. And that's pretty much what you're gonna get on most pens whether it's a, um, you know, a Lamy Safari, something like this, which is a good, a good budget pen. Um, or a, a Quack of Sport, which is another budget, um, another budget pen that's definitely worth looking at. So both of these have fine nibs, but have different nibs, but there is a slight difference. Now you can change these. There's uh, one of the Lamy Safari nibs. Very fiddly. There you go. And basically what happens is you can slide this off and then that one slides on and it literally is as easy as that. Now with the Lamy uh, series of pens and as with most pens, you can get different nibs. You can get uh, fine, medium or bold. And... Um, the specifics of those you can see in the manufacturers. There'll be samples online. Have a look at that. So that is where we start with fountain pens generally. I would recommend you get a round tip one to begin with. And then once you get used to that, you can advance on to other types of pens. So other types of pens. Now, what is there available? Well, frankly, there's about 20 different types of nibs out there. I'm not going to list them all because even I'm not that much of a nerd. Um, oh, we love nerds, so don't we? Um... So what I'm going to look at some of the ones that I use. So they basically fall into a, a, a category of sort of three different types. Now one of those types, let me find in my stash here, is called a flex nib. So this pen is a Noodler's Ahab, um, which is a fantastic name, obviously. And uh, the company is Noodler's. Um, what makes this pen a bit special is the nib was sourced from a company called FP Pens, I believe. I'll try and find a link somewhere. And this is an extra flex nib. So this isn't the standard nib that comes with the pen, which quite honestly I found was a little bit too stiff for me. So this is more reminiscent of an old fashioned vintage flex nib pen. And um, now the feed which is the bit that's behind the section. So that's this bit here. So this bit, it feed, I have modified. Now I've modified it a bit too much and it makes the pen a little bit wet, a bit too wet, but that's quite important. So how does a flex nib work? Well, I'll show you. If you just press lightly, it works very much like the previous pen with a round tip. If you turn it on its back, now this one has got slightly finer tip than the previous one so upside down it's a bit fine but that way it's a bit thicker but the real magic happens when you press down so you get you can see what what's happening here is the nib is flexing and going wider apart now you can see it's already made a bit of a mess there it's a bit of a naughty pen this one now what happens is sometimes the feed can touch and it can drip, so you have to be quite careful about how you use these. It can be a bit more temperamental. So yeah, so if you're drawing, uh, you know, a, a tire on a vehicle or something, you can get so much more character. Um, so the next one I'd like to talk about is the food nib pen. Now this has a little, the nib itself has a little upturned tip at the end. So let's see how the food pen works there. So unlike the flex nib, how hard you press on this doesn't really affect how thick a line you get. What does affect it is you can use, you can sketch with the very the very end. You turn this upside down and sketch literally on the point. Now it's very scratchy, but you do get a nice thin line and you can actually be, because it's scratchy, if you use it quickly, 
it will break the line up a little bit, which is quite nice. But you can also use it quite vertically um, and then lean it back and get these lovely wide lines. So unlike the flex pen, as you go round and round, you'll you get consistent lines. So generally, unlike the flex pen, it doesn't give a lot of line variation. You you sort of have it's quite binary. You have one or the other. Um, but that said, if you sketch with it quite gesturally, and I mean, if you were going to do a a sort of house. If you're quite gestural and not too precious, um, you will get a little bit of variation in line width just because it's a fountain pen. And you know, if you stop for a second or go back on yourself, or it will always give you a little bit more random line width than you would say get from a fine liner or something like that. So one of the things this pen is particularly good for, obviously, is blocking in. I use it quite a lot if I'm doing a, a, a fine sketch. I've done a, a sketch of some window detail like that, and I want to block in the window. Yeah, quite useful for that kind of thing. So that's a food nib. So I'm going to do a little, just a tiny little conclusion with these. Find a new bit. So we have here, food is the nib that goes up like that. Uh, flex is the nib that splits up like that. The more you use it, and that make that is what makes the thick line. You can see there. It's another point with flex pens. That's done a little naughty there again. I need to give this pen a really good clean. Right, so with a flex pen, what you find is if, you, if it goes too far apart and it runs out of ink, it does that, you see? And that's called railroading. So I think what this pen has probably got a slight problem with the feed. So it's um, it's dropping ink and it's not getting to the end of the nib. And then the last one, as we talked about before, is... So then the last one, as we talked about before, is the round tip. Which I think is probably the best place for you guys to start if you've never had a fountain pen before. So then we think, think about how we fill fountain pens. Typically, fountain pens will come with some cartridges. Um, and these are great, you just literally, once one's run out, you just push another one in, pop, and they're good to go, and they'll last quite a while. One of the nice things with those is that you, they're very portable, so you can obviously take them with you. They're available in lots of different colours. You can also get um, water-soluble and waterproof inks with cartridges. So the next option, which is a bit more environmentally friendly, is is using a converter. Now these, that red and that blue together look great, don't they? So this is basically a, a, a tiny syringe that you dip into your ink. So dip that into the ink that's normally in a bottle and you suck it up and then you pop that on there. Now with a lot of these, how they work is you, you can actually dip the whole pen in. So you'll dip the pen in up to this point here. So it's, it's over the section and onto the grip and then Obviously, you'll have to push that all the way out first, dip the pen in, and then suck all the ink in, up through the feed into the converter. Now, these obviously will save you quite a bit of money in the long run. Lots of different inks, you could, but you can buy inks in bottles because a lot of inks aren't available in cartridges. So really, I would always have a couple of converters on hand. I don't really use cartridges anymore, I'll be honest. I occasionally take a couple with me if I'm on holiday. Uh, and what I'll tend to take is some bright Lamy, and like this is being done with that colour. I think that's turquoise. Yeah. And I'll just take a pen because it's just so convenient. I don't want to be taking pots of ink with me on holiday, really. So the last option really is, is actually the eyedropper pen. Now, I don't know whether you can see here, but the whole of this pen, this is the Opus 88 pen. The whole of this pen is actually ink. 
Now, I'm not going to go into the specifics of how these pens work, but basically how you would do that is you would take this part of the pen off, which is obviously the section and all that, and then it, you would fill up. So you fill the whole barrel of the pen. Now, that means that the ink lasts an awful long time. I would say you still have to service fountain pens. You know, you probably take them apart and give them a clean once every few months. Um, so that means that I would probably fill that up two or three times between uh, between services, really, <laughs> which is a bit mad. But the Opus 88 is a massive, massive pen. So the Opus 88 is a, is a cracking fountain pen, and it's definitely a mid-range pen. Uh, they are not cheap, um, but it, it, will it will last you a lifetime if you look after it. Okay, so that's an eyedropper. So yeah, there's many different ways you can fill pens. You can use an eyedropper pen that fills it full of ink itself. You have the sort of converter system. There's a converter and a pen. And then obviously you have the normal fountain pen cartridges that I'm sure you'll be all be familiar with there. So as you can see in this drawing here, which is in another tutorial, which I shall probably put up there for you. Um, this I sketched with a completely different pen that I haven't even mentioned here is an old Parker pen that was my mother's with some blue turquoise lamy ink in. Now this is water soluble ink where you can sketch and then you can use a brush and some water and you can mix it all around. And that process again, which is covered in the video is, is, is a really lovely, quite simple free process. And it's a, it's a great way to use a fountain pen. But if you're not using water soluble inks, normally what you would do But if you weren't using water soluble inks, what you would normally do is use a fountain pen to create a sketch and uh, then you would colour in afterwards, which is traditional line and wash. And again, there's a playlist in the description below to all my line and wash tutorials. But sometimes it's nice to create, sometimes it's nice to create some art with just, you know, just with pens. Um, I mean, this is a typically mad little sketchbook of mine where I have just used, this is done with the Coaco Sport here, um, just through cross hatching and sort of a value study. Not all of these have been sketched with fountain pens, but you know, some have. Um, one of the reasons why sometimes it's quite nice to have two pens is that it gives you an option with a couple of different line widths. Like this was sketched with the Coeco Sport and then afterwards I went round with the food pen just to harden up some of the lines around the edge. So well, I've recommended a couple of these pens actually. You know, well, let's just do a couple of little mark making exercises with them. So I'm using Cardi, uh, Cardi paper here, which is quite rough. So this is the Coaco Sport. Now you can see the way I hold it. I tend to hold it like this, but as I said before, you can post it and that gives you a little bit more stability for doing like detail stuff, but I, quite, I like to use it quite loose. So here, say for example, I'm gonna do just a basic cube shape. And then I'm gonna put some cross hatching you can hear it on the paper, jumping up and down here. And we're going to assume that there is now that other shadow is going to go from it. There you go. That's the shadow. Now I'm going to put the cross hatching at a different angle there. Now, obviously, when you're painting with, when you're drawing with one media, you know, one thing, uh, your values are super important. Um, and if you're doing a sketch, it's always nice to sort of define some edges a little bit, particularly at the bottom there where it's touching that surface. So, yeah, cross hatching is uh, one of the techniques that's quite a lot of fun to do with a, um, with a fountain pen. And obviously you can vary you can vary how that cross hatching works depending on the sort of shape. And here I'm just doing a sort of radial one. 
So what I'm doing here is I'm just creating a a shadow zone basically. So everything in that area is in shadow. I'm not very well done, but you get the idea. So what you're doing is you're just creating some different values. Now, if you want to darken up some areas of that sketch, faces are probably kind of the good way of showing this, is you can go in at a different angle and add another layer of cross-hatching there, like that. There you go. So basically, you have value 1, value 2, and then here we've got value 3, and then here, value 4. You can see the paper starting to come a bit away there, because it's been overworked, but anyway. So yeah, you've got different ways of creating values. And that's just a really simple little messing about there. So yeah, that's the Kawako Sport. Um, it's a cool little pen. And now to the Lamy Safari. Now this one is what they call the demonstrator, which is a clear one, which I quite like, because you can see all the little bits of ink and things in here. Um, so what's the difference between these two? Well, this one, it's got a uh, bold nib in. Um, so that's probably not 100% a fair comparison. I quite like the bold nibs in the Lamy's, uh, particularly if you're doing um, the kind of, this kind of drawing where you actually want quite a lot of ink to go on in certain places. But basically, the feel of this uh, is pretty similar to the Kawako Sport, really. I mean, they're both pretty standard fountain pen feels. Uh, yeah. So some little, some random stuff up my brain here. I'm doing some kind of still life of a hatchet and some wood. I don't know, I'm losing my marbles, but anyway. One of the things that's quite nice about the fountain pen is, um, as I said to you before, is um, it, it's a tactile thing. You can hear it. And the irregularity of the lines and all that, it's just, it's a lot of fun. So say for example with this one now, if I just get a quick brush and any old brush. Um, so I will just create some shadow there. Uh, not quite sure that's his, but maybe his beer tankard. There you go. Anyway, it gives you a vague idea. So that's using water soluble ink. Um, the Quacko Spa obviously doesn't he have water soluble ink in, but. You will find that if it's not completely dry, this happens. That's I knew that wasn't completely dry because that was a really saturated bit. So it's really important to use a hairdryer or something. I'll just let it dry, just give it five minutes. Certain inks dry quicker than others. Uh, I'm not going to go into different types of inks and things here today because I think you've probably got enough to think about. But certainly do message me. There's going to be more videos and more content on this going forward anyway. So that gets us on to which pen is best for a beginner. Um, now, there's a lot of pens available out there, a lot of fountain pens. I would personally go for something cheap. Um, that's not just because I'm a Yorkshireman and I'm tight with money, but it's because you might not like it. 
Um, and if you do like it, uh, you might want to get another one of the same. Now let me explain that. When I first started sketching with um, fountain pens, I started with the Lamy Safari, which is an excellent pen. But I quickly realised that I wanted one with waterproof ink in and one with water soluble ink. Uh, so I bought another. And then I thought it might be quite nice to have uh, a different coloured ink in there because sometimes I wanted to use a sepia ink, sometimes I wanted to use blue or black. So I bought another. You can see what's happening here. And then another. Um, and before I knew it, and I was picking, actually picking these up used off eBay actually for like pence uh, or a couple of quid. Um, so I ended up with, uh, so ultimately I ended up with seven <laughs> Lamy Safari pens. Now some have got bold um, nibs, some have got fine nibs, some have got medium nibs, but they all had different colours in at one time and they all had different types of inks in. So I would go sketching with these and just go mad. Um, I don't think you need seven, <laughs> but I would recommend you buy one. Uh, once you start, the Lamy Safari pens are great. They're dead easy to clean, they're dead easy to use. You can use the little cartridges, you can buy them, get started with those. Um, the cartridge size is a standard cartridge size. And the converters are relatively cheap. So I would start with the Lamy Safari, but I would caveat that by saying this little pen here is a Kawako Sport. Now these are absolutely tiny. Um, you can post the cap and then use the pen like that, or I tend to, to paint with it like that. I tend to draw with it like that at the very end. It's got some grooves, some texturing on the finial there, which means that you have a sort of tactile um, touch. It's got, I've got a little converter in there, it's absolutely tiny. Um, that's the, the biggest downside with this pen is, is the size of the cartridges, they're very, very small, which means that they don't last very long. Um, but these are super compact and actually, I probably sketch with that as much as I probably use the Lamy now. You can get uh, some really quite beautiful brass versions of these, but they're expensive, they're 70 pounds. Um, but these you can get for sort of 20 bucks, 20 dollars, 20 quid. So I would say, if you have small hands particularly, I would recommend this. Uh, now I, I don't have small hands, but I just like using it. Um, or alternatively, a Lamy Safari. There is a lot of other pens out there at this price bracket, there is probably quite a few decent ones, but there's probably quite a few that are promising to do flex or whatever. Or those packs where you get like, you know, six nibs. Avoid anything that looks almost too good value, if you know what I mean. So in conclusion, if I was going to be buying a pen now as a beginner, I would be looking either probably at the Lamy Safari, or if you've got smaller hands, the Kawako Sport. They're both compact, they're both pretty reliable pens, they weren't uh, dropping in your sketch bag and yeah they're very good. There you go, we've done a few samples, a few sketches, we've covered some of the basics. Um, I think there's going to be some more stuff coming up with fountain pens in terms of inks, talking about that sort of stuff and um, I hope you enjoyed that. Now if you did please like and subscribe, um, you can buy me a coffee, you can head over to my website and check out some of my original artwork that's for sale. Um, I just yeah, I'd just like to say thanks for staying to the end, <laughs> and uh, and hopefully we'll see you again next time. Cheers now, bye bye.